In November of last year, made a post blaming Adriana for basically saying Adriana left the park and walked out the front door, but she never left the premises. I've done the 360 view of the hotel. I've taken the tour. I've walked the whole damn thing through this 360 virtual tour that you can access. What the Wilson brothers are saying true is that Adriano walked out the door but didn't leave. His name is Shondell Wilson. His street name is Man Man. He has three brothers who was at the party the night that Kanika was murdered. His brothers are as follows. Davion Wilson, AKA Huggy. Daryl Wilson, AKA Winky, Daquan Wilson, aka Quan. This guy here also knows Rico. Okay, not P Rico, but Rico. That front parking lot turns you literally kind of go out, go left, go around. You could go all the way around the building back to where the kitchen is. That kitchen is directly where the loading dock is on the first floor. She literally would have had to have just walked all the way around and very easily have been in that freezer area. Hands down, no question. There's no sign in, buzz in, whatever for the employee's entrance. The employee's entrance, the back dock, all of that is within a 20 to 30 foot radius of that kitchen. And the employee area, according to them, the cameras don't work there. There's no way to tell who actually came and went into the hotel. Seriously, if somebody, you know, off the street walked in and killed Janika, we'd never fucking know because they literally could have walked in through a blind spot. Abriana and Mike G. Tate and CC could have also very easily have killed her because all they would have had to do is walk around. This guy was running all throughout the hotel around the same time Kanika was pushed off the elevator by Monifa and Shamaya. Okay? I'm gonna break it down for you guys play by play since some of you don't understand. This is him coming into the hotel at 2.25 a.m. You notice he is on a cell phone. Now, if you scale back and watch Irene's video, 
Irene is on the phone with someone and she's telling them where to park and what the room number is. When they say it's the lower level kitchen, it's very misleading because literally it is ground level. It's on the level of the ballroom. We can't figure out why they call it the lower level kitchen because there is a kitchen in the actual basement. Kanika's kitchen she was in, that's not, that's almost, that's ground level. I don't like Chosen. I really can't stand the guy, but Chosen actually went there and went into that kitchen area. To this day, it is still not secured. Anybody, he literally walked the fuck right in. I mean, of course, you know, he got escorted out. The thing is, is how did they catch him so fast but saw her, somebody had to have not been doing their job. Like they weren't monitoring the cameras or, you know what I'm saying? Because there's no way they got to Chosen within 10 minutes of him being down there and they can't find Kanika for a fucking hour. There's absolutely no way. The hotel is negligent in the fact that when they all went to the front desk to tell them that they could not find their friend, they could have very easily pulled up the recording. They're negligent in the aspect that they didn't do that. They were not allowed to talk about anything that took in place there at the hotel at all. After a girl was found dead in the walk-in cooler, they put us all on a probationary. I worked there for over a year, then suddenly the payday, following the girl in the kitchen, we couldn't get our pay until we signed a paper saying we agreed no one to talk to anyone about co-workers, the owners, or anything about the hotel between September the 7th, 2017 and September 14th, 2017. Those of us who had direct deposit, though we could avoid signing, if we didn't feel comfortable signing that because there was no end date on when we could talk about it. One co-worker going to law school said they left this contract open for a lifetime like if we were we are talking about the girl and that 10 years from now they can take us to court. We all know the owner is a lawyer and our pay that we work for was being held hostage I signed and I'm writing because I obtained a lawyer after leaving it was explained to me that I was forced to sign under the rest that's not legal after the protest and the news came to the hotel we called the manager in the cooler we was looking for him 20 minutes when the maintenance told where he was this was three to four weeks after everything and we opened the walk-in to see he was taking pictures of the empty freezer area. I didn't like that and when we questioned him, he was very defensive. After that happened, Christmas came and went, but it didn't feel like Christmas at work or home. I caught myself watching the manager all the time. Then I caught myself watching the maintenance man because we always found them together. tell you why they can implement that. In order to work in Rosemont, you must be a resident of Rosemont. So literally, if those people lost their job, they would be blackballed from the entire city and not be able to work in their town. You have to actually live in Rosemont to work in Rosemont. Rosemont was founded by one family. It really is run very mafia style. So can you imagine, you know what happened. You know, you tell, you will never work in your town again, literally, because you will be blackballed. And then what happens to your house, your kids, your livelihood? This is how they have people over a barrel. It's a little cultish, isn't it? I don't know. And like, that hotel is actually owned by an LLC. 
it's like a conglomerate, the Chevrolet change or whatever, that investors or whatever. That town is going to do everything and anything it can to protect that hotel and its reputation because it is literally directly across the street from the convention center. When people say, why would these cover up for these kids? They're not. They're covering their ass because anytime a convention is held in Rosemont, that hotel gets mad business. That business puts revenue, tax money for the hotel charges and surcharges into the town itself. It, it, you see what I'm saying? That hotel generates several million dollars a year for that town alone. I think it's closer to 12 if I was correct, but I, I got to look that up. I'm not going to go on the books. I'm telling you it's in the millions, though, just in hotel revenue. Now, it's also nine minutes from O'Hare. So it's an airport. If a flight is canceled, delayed, plane can't leave, where are gonna, people going to go? You're going to go to the closest hotel near your airport. That hotel is only nine minutes away. The town of Rosemont is going to do whatever it can to keep that revenue. They're not covering for the kids. They're covering for the fucking money. This whole case is going to boil down to the almighty dollar. Why did they do what they did? Why did they doctor the footage? Why did they freaking take 36 hours to release the footage? Come on. And what I don't understand, and this is what is so peculiar to me. Generally, you are supposed to, in a police investigation, give over the, the hard drive of the video. They gave them a flash drive. They never gave them the original. Tell could have done whatever the fuck they wanted. They never actually turned over the actual hard drive. The only place that any footage would be in its entirety would be the security company that monitors the cameras. You know, because they have an alarm company, basically, you know, like Safeguard or whatever, whoever monitors it would have the original, but they gave Rosemont RPV a flash drive instead of the fucking hard drive. What fucked up police goddamn department except the flash drive? Because anything can be doctored on that. And all they have to do is destroy the original. Yeah, I've given you what you asked for. You asked for it. You took it. You accepted it. You logged it into as evidence. That's what they were given. To me, that didn't make no sense. Because police departments generally require the original hard drive. Especially when there has been a suspicious theft. 19-year-olds don't walk in the freezers to fucking die. And they don't wander through the hall looking like they're fucking almost about to die. And nobody noticed it. You can't tell me that somebody didn't see her. But I can guarantee you everybody that left the hotel probably had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. And that is the only reason that it's not out on social media. If, and I'm going to say if this wasn't a gang hit, I can guarantee you they made them sign this non-disclosure agreement before they left. I can guarantee you probably most of them have been paid off to shut the fuck up. That is why we're not hearing anything out of them. And the only way to track that, and it actually is traceable, but then you'd have to access their bank account. You'd have to have financial records from the hotel. And I don't think it would come from directly from the hotel. You'd actually have to check the financial records of the young people themselves. Because I have a video that PZ, um, is what caught my eye, is on September 28th. He's flashing a wash that looks like it costs about 10000 fucking dollars. It looks like it's got real diamonds in it. It looks expensive as fuck. And that is what, a couple of weeks after she died? That shit don't make no sense. You've never seen him wear no shit like that before. You cannot get 30 people to shut the fuck up. You can't. I've never seen it done. Think about it. None of them are talking. There has to be a reason. And the thing is, the Wilson brothers aren't vice lords. And even they aren't talking. I mean, they pointed the finger at Abriana, and then they went ghost. You don't see them posting. Why? When is powerful enough to shut them all up? What threat was made? What did they sign off on? Did they accept money for silence? That's what I'm saying, though, is, is can you imagine, how do you get that many people to shut up? Girls will talk to other girls, a girl will say something, 
It's like playing child, you know what I mean? Well, I have no information other than a case file ever come out. We've never gotten any real substantial evidence from any one of these people. Not one. So was a non-disclosure agreement signed and money paid out to shut up? Or was this a gang thing where it's high enough that whoever ordered the hit is scary enough to shut everyone up? Shemaya posts about every goddamn thing under the sun every damn day. She don't say nothing but other than I miss you, Kanika. She don't say shit. It was the witness statements that said that she went back for the phone. We don't hear Shemaya saying it. When have we ever heard anything Shemaya actually has to say? Because the witnesses' statements, they're all, you know, she left with them and, you know, one was at the door, they both came back. Some people couldn't even get the story straight. They couldn't tell you if one or both of them left or one or both of them came back. But you don't hear from the girls saying, this is what happened or this happened. Yes, I did this or no, I didn't. There has to be a reason. I don't give a shit about the whole snitching thing. People still talk and nobody has said anything. The streets still talk. The streets end up knowing more shit about that than the cops and shit do. The whole case is a walking contradiction. Some things make sense and some things make none. And then you got contradicting times. At the end of the day, I'm going to believe the Facebook posts and the timestamps on those over the hotel because that can't be doctored. The hotel took 36 hours to release, I think it was 36 hours to release the footage. So you had time to call in somebody to doctor the footage, move or add people. You tell me how Kanika is seen walking through the halls, but you can't tell me she never walked through the lobby, not one. Who walks around the halls and all of a sudden decides to walk through the double doors? The only thing I can think of is, well, I meet you in the kitchen. Hold on, I got, you know, I don't even know why she would go. Why would she go to the kitchen? Why would she go through double doors? Other than the only thing I could think of is if she was this or she was that disoriented, her mom said she worked in a kitchen, correct? For years, Kanika would have in her childhood felt comfortable was in a commercial kitchen. That would be your only logical for her to walk in there is you know, it would have been a familiar setting type thing. She would have felt comfortable there. She grew up in a commercial kitchen where her mother worked. But what other reason would she have to walk to the freezer? There was a room right off of the kitchen. If you felt you needed to lie down, how the fuck did you end up going through two two doors? Now, that's the thing that gets me too, okay? It wasn't like she was turning doorknobs. She was literally having to pull these handles in the pitch dark. That cooler does not have a light. In the pitch dark, opened another door and just laid down. In the pictures that you see of her from the forensic, that cooler door was not closed tightly. Her foot was in the way. The freezer was never closed. It looks too safe like a body dome. But at one point, I'm going to be honest with you, there is Irene's infamous live, not the one where she's on the bed, the one where she's sitting there talking to somebody about the room and blah, blah, blah. When Nipa takes the phone from her at some point, I believe, or gives it back to her, one of the two, in the edited, that's the edited version that we see. Now, clips have come out. There are clips that Monifa, somebody asked Monifa for money, and she said, I had no money, and she went to pull her pocket, and a shitload of change fell out. Now, that was removed from the live. Okay, in the part that she left on Facebook. Now, change was found in the freezer with Kanika. So, it's kind of one of those, you made yourself look guilty whether you were or not. Because the stuff that you removed, you know what I mean? If you had just left it, it wouldn't have been such, if you did it deliberately, okay? There was deliberate things that you removed. Like, why did you remove Shamaya standing there fixing her clothes in the bathroom? talking to you. Why did you remove the change falling out of your pocket? Those deleted clips from a friend of Monifa's off of her phone. She literally sent them from Monifa's phone to her own phone without Monifa knowing and then leaked them. My question is, why were those specific things deleted? Why was Kanika being in the bathroom, slurring and stuff, deleted? Why was that taken out? That actually would have probably helped your case that she, at least she was fucking alive and not being raped on the fucking bed. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like, why were those specific things removed? It don't make sense. 
People do things for a reason. Those things that we're going to find more clues. Because what was left out, I'm sick and tired of saying that in Irene's glasses you see Tinika being raped. Actually, what you see at one point is Neff. You see Neff, he's the one in the red that comes in the hotel with the red shirt and the headband around his head, the white one. And Sakara sitting across from her. And the reason that the, it looks funny is the lenses that she has on are not a straight black surface. That is a curvature lens. It's like being in a funhouse mirror. Curvature lens makes things look bigger or smaller than they actually are. So you can't really tell what the hell is going on in her glasses. It's like I said, this case is a wanted contradiction. Tanika Jenkins was a young lady that was found dead in the freezer in Rosemont, and they ruled it an accident. But we all know different. Rest in peace. They moved her body and the evidence was mishandled. The most important camera was dismantled. That would have proved that she was murdered. Her death wasn't accidental. The crime scene was not sealed off. The murderers just peeled off. Trust a man in a uniform. It's like trusting I'll see a unicorn. We ain't giving up. We gon' protest. Yell, scream, hold signs, and toot the horn. Ain't no sleeping in Rosemont. She released the tapes and get the news informed. It said between three and four, she was last seen on that floor. Andrew Holmes lied and said he saw her open the door. Walked in the freezer but can't see no more. Irene, Monifa, Shemaya, all three of them is liars. We're supposed to be her riders and back her up like the choir. The rumor was they did it for some paper. Tied her up and then taped her. Pinned her down and gang raped her. The footage friends, who's fake her? Them blurred videos wasn't live. Irene wore them glasses to hide. That black eye from that black guy. You know the one with dreads to his backside. She that drunk but ain't fall once. Black people smoking all blunts. You mean the cops can get a call once in the suburbs? That's a front. Justice for the 